Hello there, my name is Pastor Fred Ngango from Christian Fellowship Church, KL Dixon Ministries. We would like to invite you to come and follow us on our church on the air. Our pastor has been sharing a theme, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Now we believe that the gospel of the kingdom is good news. Everyone, everywhere you are, at any time in your life, you need good news. And we assure you that in Jesus, you will always have good news. If you would like to follow us, please, KL Dixon Ministries is our Facebook link. And when you come, please like, share, invite someone, and we will be glad to hear from you. If you'd like to know more about us, you'd like to partner, you'd like to give this information down on your screen, we will be glad to hear from you. God bless you. Dear lovely listeners and the viewers, I am glad once again to come to you and I declare blessing over you whenever you listen to me and things are working, your dreams changes. Those that are dreaming bad dreams, we recommend that they stop and you begin to dream about great things of the kingdom of God. Once again, we are coming to you today with a theme entitled, Jesus Knows His Ship. And we're getting this introduction from the book of John, chapter 10, verse 22 through 30. Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem into his winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my, my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I say to you. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any one snatches them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Praise the Lord. Loving Father, we thank you. We are ready to hear from you. We are ready to be blessed. We are ready to hear words of living life, fountains and rivers to flow out of our lives. We are ready to leave everything and follow you. Thank you for being tolerant with us. Thank you for your, our shepherd. We are your sheep. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, this is a wonderful, wonderful time that uh, you guys, you need to know that we never, don't worry for people to know you. Don't worry for great people. Uh, yeah. Some people, are, you are getting people that are not even related to you. Call them your uncle because they have a car. You know, don't, don't look for those relationships. You call people your mother because you, you had them cooking meat. You know, Jesus knows all your need and knows everything that you're missing. Don't join with, don't look for respect and honor honor trying to work with work with murderers because you need to be respected i want to tell you those that are nothing now will be something then the first will be last and the last will be first but humble yourself let you disappear as the lord jesus appears because he's the lord of lords and the king of all jesus speaks about something here which you just really need to understand in uh, in 10 in john chapter 10 verse 22 this is what he says uh, it speaks about all of this, but in a little elaborate, the security of the sheep lies in the power of the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, and his relationship to his father. I repeat this. The security of the sheep lies in the power of the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, and his relationship with his father. When Jesus' relationship remain good, it has been good, it is good, and it will ever be good because the three 
including the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. But now listen to this. The strength of the pastor lies in the relationship he has with the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. When the pastor has a relationship with the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, he's a good shepherd. And that good shepherd will always lead because he does not do things according to his own will. He does things according to the will of the one who sent me, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I want you to listen to me that you that think that God doesn't know you, if you're born again, God does know you by name. He knows you where you stay. He knows your address. He knows what you're going through. He knows your challenges. He knows everything that's going on. Don't say, God, why did you forget me? God cannot forget you. The systems of heaven are not like the systems of the world. If the world can become articulate, how about the one who created the world? Do you know that even those little insects that you step by and you kill, they are creatures of heaven? Do you know there are things that you take to be inexpensive, irrelevant, none of the worldly science can even create one of them? When you go into these major hospitals, they can treat you until they declare you dead. If you die, the oxygen machine do not bring back life to you. You just say, oh, I'm sorry, he's dead. They can declare you dead. Jesus, when he went on the tomb of Lazarus, they had declared him dead. You know what Jesus said? He's not dead, he's sleeping. I will wake him up. Your death to Jesus is asleep. He can wake you up. He knows you by name. He knows your failures. He knows your destiny. He knows your future. That's Jesus that died on the rugged cross of Calvary for you. I want you to understand, if we elaborate more with you into this, uh, when we go to uh, uh, John chapter 10, verse 22, uh, 27, this is what he says. Uh, I mean John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice. <laughs> Do you know that we have some people who tell about just say, eh? I don't understand. Those are not the sheep of the Lord. <laughs> Because the sheep of the Lord, when they talk about Jesus, everybody stops and listens to God. And I know them. And they follow me. I know my sheep. And they follow me. Listen to this. When you go and you feed all animals together, maybe five families. Here in Africa, it is well known. You can go, young boys, they used to go and feed different animals together. But do you know in the evening, these animals sort out themselves? The one for James goes with James. The one for John goes with John. Because these animals know their shepherd and they know the class and the group they belong to. But do you know what animal that is always very confused to know where it is going? It is a goat. <laughs> when you lead a goat and they are about, let me say, 30, by the time you arrive home, you have two. Because they kept stopping on the way <laughs> and going another way. But the sheep, you have all of them because they are following their leader. I'm asking you today, you can upgrade. Come from a goat sheep and enter into a sheep. And where you will follow the healer, the redeemer, the one that gives everlasting life. Jesus, the son of the living God. He knows you by name. Now, don't be so surprised when you have people that have chosen to look for money instead of looking for Savior. There are some people that are spending their, their time looking for women and alcohol and favor. They don't care. Either they worship the devil as long as they have the money. Don't worry about the success of evil man. If an evil man successes, buys trucks, buys planes, uh, buys land, opens up banks, but it doesn't matter. As long as this person is an occultist, a worshiper of the devil, he's owning what is passing away. What will it help you, brother, to eat the whole world and lose your life in hell? Don't you think this uh, a philosophy of a poor man that sat by the gate of a rich man, that poor man that sat by the gate of a rich man, he did not get good news. You know, uh, I think those of you that are vet doctor, you know that a dog's tongue heals sores. Because when it licks them, then all the germs are gone and they dry up. So the dogs helped a lot to heal this man on the door. 
This man had no fresh food for this man. He just gave him a throwaway and he shared with the dogs. When the dogs have somebody they understand, they will accept to share without fighting. Because dogs, by nature, they respect human beings. But when these people went to heaven, this magnificent rich man that had everything, eh? unfortunately, he was not approved for heaven. This poor man, the sure guy who's, who, were, who was stinking and smelled badly, is the one that was given everlasting life. Listen to this. It doesn't matter how much you own in this world. Fight for titles. Let them call you anything they want. All those are fake titles because the real titles are in heaven. They will live forever and ever. Amen. I want to tell you something. You better have your name written in the book of life and be known by the only giver of life. The one that was in the beginning, Jesus was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word now has come. The Bible says he loved the world so much. That he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have an everlasting life. My sister that is listening to me, you are seated on that couch. You are seated on that dining table. You are lying on your bed. Listen to this. Give me attention. Jesus says, are you tired? Are you heavy laden? Don't, don't offer you your self-condemnation. Jesus knows all that you've done, all the abortions you've done. He knows all the lies you've done. He knows all the fake marriage you've been in. He knows everything that you've been in, but he's not concerned about what you've been in. He's only concerned. He says, I want to pull you out and make you a saint. This is not a time to start talking about your past because your past has nothing good. It's a time now to deliver you and the sin is taken away and your sins are washed away by the precious blood of the Lamb. I want you to understand, he knows your name and he says you know his voice. This is God speaking to you and it's time for you to follow him. Let's go and read uh, 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 verse 28. And I give them eternal life. Oof. Is there any shop? <laughs> Is there any market that gives eternal life? Is there any office? Listen to this. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Let me tell you something. There are things that you go through, brother, and you never think you will survive. You never think you do what you will survive. But I've been born again for more than 30 years. There are situations that I never thought I'm going to go through this. But do you know what happens? There you are. You find yourself on the other side. Don't, as much as you see things that are ready to destroy you, they're everywhere. Also see a way that with God, all things are possible. Can you give me a little an imaginary? If you can imagine what happened to the children of Israel from Egypt, God has led them and has led them a wrong way. He has led them by the sea. What would you think of that God in the first place? In the first place, when you think of that God and you think about this God in a human manner, you would think we are following a wrong God. He does not even have any geography. When the commanders of the military, as much as they know how to shoot guns, but they must carry enough geography. Because in their way of fighting, they must know where they are, they must know where they are coming from, they must know where they are going, and they must know their way of escape in case they are attacked by fire, by the enemy fire. Now, this God of Egypt, this God that has delivered you from Egypt, has performed terrible miracles, has resurrected, has done everything, has killed, has turned rivers into blood. Now, he has led you by a wrong way. What do you think? I want to tell you. Everything wrong to you, it could be right to your creator. Because he had a miracle in a reservation that where there is no way, God can put away. I think when Pharaoh saw them taking that way, he knew now I got them. I have them. I'm going to destroy them by the river, by the, uh, by, by, by the sea. Well, God had a plan that in that sea, he did not only see a way how to deliver the children of God, but also to destroy the enemy into the water. <laughs> so, so, brethren, don't, don't be so, so startled when the enemy, your enemies begin to follow you. Let them keep following you. But you go through an area where they will never go through, and the next day they will declare them dead. 
And you enemies, be careful. Don't follow me. Because I'm, I'm telling you, one time you follow me and you'll never get out. Because there are areas which are no go, no go zone for the people that are not children of God. You see it and talk. I don't care who you are. I don't care what, how strong you are. I don't care how many guns and bombs you have. I don't care how much money you have. My God is stronger than your God. And he has allowed you to allow us to go. You have twisted us. You have toasted us like as if we are, we are chips and, uh, 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 and cucumber. But let me tell you something. A time will come when all your toasts will come to you a hundred times. I want to tell you, children of God, wherever you are, one of the things that the world hates is to hear somebody that preaches about Jesus that resurrected. Do you know that all the wrong people know the wrong gospel where it is and their friends? But they will never be friends to the people that preach the resurrected Christ. Preachers that are standing strong, I command in the name of Jesus, let the favor of the Lord be upon you. Let the power from above stand with you. Jesus actually uh, put this letter to the Colossians. He says that the just shall live by faith. But if anybody turns back, my soul is not pleased of him. Listen to this, even if they bring you to the time of death, because the Bible says some of us will be killed for the testament of heavens. But if you're still alive and you breathe, praise the Lord. Listen to this. And I give them eternal life. My sheep, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. <laughs> I've talked about China. If you land in China, you think maybe you're close to heaven. But you're, you're, you're just close to hell. When you go to the United Kingdom, I've been there several times, you think was this city built by human beings? Well, it is still the world. COVID-19 still, can still get there easily and kill people. When you go to the United States, everybody would desire to be into the United States. You know, a land of, uh, I beg your pardon? A land of opportunities where, where every dream can come to pass. But listen to this, the best dream in the United States would be Christ the giver of everlasting life. If you go to Arab Emirates, you arrive there. I've been there several times. You say, wow, whose dream was this? Things are so magnificent. Singing waters. I've not seen, seen singing water in the United States of America. Neither in the UK. I've not seen. But in Arab Emirates, they, are, they have a singing water. They just have a tune. They sing and they dance. You can even be startled and, and open your mouth all the way. Ah, because you're seeing something amazing. But they're just wildly. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the way, the life, and the truth. There's no body that can live forever until Jesus has become your personal Lord and Savior. You will never be the same, and your life will be so sure. You will be full of security, and you will have the guarantee. Your insecurity will turn into faith, because in anything, you're more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Now, when, when we go to verse 29, you realize something here. Verse 29. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. Hallelujah. <laughs> My father that has given me this ship is greater than all. Greater than all the many, greater than all the military. You know, today everything that happens, the only response is military. In fact, you remember that when there's a problem, two things will be tackled. One is money. Two is military. Now, actually, there's a third thing, medical. But I want to tell you that all those things, like right now, most of these are almost weared down. <laughs> Do you know that hospitals in all these developed countries, including the United States of America, they ran short of you know, utilities? things to use to treat the sick. They did what they call a mass, massive graves. And the people that were massively graved were not homeless people. <laughs> we are not beggars. It, it, when something overrides, at times even all the law of nature can, because the more you keep these dead bodies not buried, the more it is dangerous for the ones that are alive. Have you ever imagined that day when they are only hurrying to do one thing for you, to bury you quickly. 
nobody wants to give you a seat. No, even in your bedroom in Africa, when people die, they even remove them from their bedroom, putting them in the living room because here we don't have funeral homes. But do you know at 2 p.m., either you like it or not, you must be buried. 2 p.m. And in fact, when death comes, it does not make you time, give you time to write your will. You can't say, delay the funeral day until I write my will. Whatever you did is what you did. Your file is sealed, completed. It is before the judge of all, the king of kings, the lord of all, Jesus, the son of the living God. I want to tell you, my father, who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snuck them out of my father's hand. Oh, children of God, wherever you are, this word will toss you around. People will push you to the wall. Just like the devil pushed Jesus to the wall after fasting. You know, when you're hungry, 40 days you've not eaten nothing. Somebody says, you have a God, tell him to give you food. Turn this stone into food. The devil, Jesus told the devil, I don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of my father. I can go live and alive when my father speaks. I'm not a magician like you, devil. Then he said, that's what you're saying? Let me take you to the pinnacle of the temple. The devil took him to the pinnacle of the temple. He said, now, you are so scripturalized. Now, the Bible says that the angels will pick you up if I push you. Now, can I push you? And Jesus said, do not make a fool out of, out of your God. God has, does not entertain fools. <laughs> Don't boot my God to trial. Never test the Lord, your God. Oh, those are different versions. That's how they, they give it. Huh? You don't see a, a, a ten wheeler coming and you say in the name of Jesus, I'm going to sleep in the road and it will, st it will crush you quickly and very well. Because no angel is actually ready to protect a fool. <laughs> Angels are ready to protect you from accidents. <laughs> but if you decide, no, if, when the angel look at your heart, they don't think you can, you can even ever decide something like that. But when a mistake is happening, in the heavenly speed, they will know that a mistake has happened. But not when you make a choice of it. Angels would have, have a lot. In fact, when you climb a tall building, go to the sixth floor, maybe the seventh floor, and you jump off the building and you kill yourself, everybody wonders. And nobody to blame because it was your choice. <laughs> they can't even blame the one that was standing with you because they only testify. We saw him climbing and he jumped out. That's what he did? Exactly. So what do we do? Bury him. Now it is the same thing for you. When you are moving with the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to tell you that believe him. Trust him. Because in all that you are going through, you can't be sneaked out of our Father's hand. COVID-19, Ebola, HIV, uh, Marburg, you name it, the list continues. By the way, I want to remind you, you the historians, that history repeats itself. The reason why you call it COVID-19, because it has happened before. This is for the year 20, 2019. It came as... Uh, it came as a, vi as a coronavirus. So that's why in 2019 now we call it COVID-19 because it is a reappearance. History repeats itself. Different diseases have happened here. Smallpox, chickenpox. All those were hard things. But still the children of God survived. And those that were with the Lord, they are already with the Lord. And they are worshipping him in the truth in the spirit. Because when you are in Jesus, you will never die. You will live forever. And Ava. So we're not afraid. We're not only praying that you guys do not die. At times you have to die and meet the Lord. There's no problem with that. Can you fear going home? They find you on the roundabout. Why are you not moving? I'm afraid to reach home. Let me, tell, let me tell you. If it's time to reach home, I'm ready. It's time for me to stay and prolong. I'm ready. I'm not, Paul says, I consider it a profit to remain and preach, but I consider it no loss also to leave and go and meet my father. It is good to help. It is good to do all that. But what if it's time for you to go home? Go home because you are anointed, blessed for everlasting life. I want you to understand this wherever you are as I conclude. The security of the sheep lies in the power of the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. 
and his relationship with his father. Jesus and his father are in a good relationship. That's why Jesus resurrects the dead. That's why he dies and resurrects. That's why he is, gives everlasting life. The strength of the pastor, you and me, lies in the relationship we have with the chief shepherd, and that is Jesus Christ. When we're in a good relationship, we can do variantly great. We can preach the gospel. We can call down fire. We can resurrect the dead. We can heal the lame. We can speak to those that belong to Jesus, and they'll be thieved out to see the great power of the mighty healer. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And listen to this. For those of you that are there, that are men of God, you're going through a trial. Listen to this. That trial is much less than the glory you're about to meet. You're going through a hard time. There's nothing that starts and doesn't have an end. Even this COVID-19 will end. There are those of you that you are in a terrible financial situation. I understand I've ever been in a terrible financial situation, but I want you to believe that God knows what you are going through. Don't doubt God over that because his hand supplies. I want also to remind those of you that are not born again, listen to this. Whatever you have surrounding you does not help you. You can use that gun which you have to protect you. You yourself use it against yourself. So listen to this. Only God that even protects your mind from doing wrong because he's a God of your salvation. I want to understand for you that are listening to me that are not yet born again. The only way to get out today is to believe Christ with your heart for righteousness and confess him with your mouth for salvation. I want to give you this opportunity and say, Lord, I believe you with my heart for righteousness. I love you, Jesus. You are Lord. As the Bible says, whoever calls you Lord is born again. And I declare you as my personal Lord and Savior. Today I am born again. I am saved. I'm a child of God. I fear nothing. I will tell everybody that I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I am born again. I am a child of God. Your life will never be the same again. You are transformed. You are sanctified. You are purified. And your name has entered into the kingdom of God. But you need to go in depth and understand everything that God does. Then uh, for those of you that have never received the Holy Spirit, it's high time today you get a gift from the Father and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit because that is a seal that you belong to Jesus. Deliverance. There are some of you that have very funny habits. Very funny habits. You know how funny your habits are. Bring them to the Lord who will deliver you. There are some people that lie when there's no reason to lie. They still lies. There are some people that promise and never fulfill. That's a terrible thing. God has to deliver you out of that bad habit. Eh? There are some people that drink. You really do not want to drink, but you end up drinking. God can help you. There are some of you that are liars and lustful. Jesus can deliver you from all of that because that's the reason why you surrendered your life to him. Deliverance is the children's bread. And there are those that are desiring a miracle. I agree with you that whatever you desire, for goodness sake, for this listening that you have done, I command that it takes place. I take authority right now in the mighty name of Jesus, declaring the healing over this land, over this nation, over this leadership, the president, the uh, legislature, the ministers, uh, the members of parliament. I command that the healing from above comes over this land. Heal even our neighboring country. I pull all the power of witchcraft. I pull it down. I bring down every spirit that exalts itself against the name of the Lord. I take you a captive right now and I command liberty to deliverance of this land in Jesus' mighty name. I, I bless your wife, your son, your, na, your dad, your mom, your brother, your sister. I bless every environment around you in the great mighty name of Jesus I declare you blessed amen in Jesus name